Hi, it's Barbara Close and my good friend, Hillary Mendoza. And we are here to take you through the 30s at Palm Beach Day Academy or Palm Beach Day, Palm Beach Private Schools, actually. So we are, as you know, we left off in the 20s in the Palm Beach School for Girls and the Palm Beach School for Boys. So now we're going to talk about what happened in the 30s. So I'm going to get the slideshow up and Hillary is going to start talking about it. Well, in the early 30s, uh, a group of parents, they were large benefactors for local, um, air, local institutions, and they were philanthropists, and they had children at the Palm Beach School for Girls and the Palm Beach School for Boys, and they wanted to merge the two schools. Uh, remember, the Palm Beach School for Boys only went through eighth grade. And the Palm Beach School for Girls had kindergarten through high school. So they wanted to merge them. So their first order of business was to find land um, on which to build a school building and a playground. And what they found was 425 square feet at $60 a square foot in the Poinciana Park air area which is now encompasses Sea View all the way to Worth Avenue and then um, the C Streets also. And so after they found this land, they had to um, engage an architect. And so they chose Marion Sims Wyeth, who was responsible for um, initially the architecture of Mar-a-Lago, and then the Society of the Four Arts and the Norton Gallery of Art. He also designed the beautiful um, deco doors that are still at the front of the school. Um, these benefactors and philanthropists were um, a very interesting, varied, and, um, well, fabulously wealthy group. And the first president and treasurer of the board, um, which they had created from the incorporators, um, the board at this point was uh, made up of um, all of the incorporators. And um, well, before I go into the incorporation, let me tell you about some of these um, men and women. So the first president, Alfred Kay, he and his wife were, um, he was a stockbroker and they had, they spent their winters in Palm Beach and they were instrumental in um, creating and um, perpetuating the society, the four arts. They were benefactors of St. Mary's Hospital and also um, what was then called the Crippled Children's Society, which today is Palm Beach Rehabilitation Center. And um, they also revived uh, the P Pine Ridge Hospital, which at that point was the only hospital for African-Americans in the, in the county. And uh, another one of the incorporators was um, E.R. Bradley, Colonel E.R. Bradley. And um, he was, he had worked in the steel mills. He had mined for gold. And then he got into the gambling hotel business. A, he had actually followed uh, Flagler down to Palm Beach in 1898. And he built Bradley's Beach Club, which was a restaurant and a private gambling casino. He also um, invested in the school as much as some of the others, if not more, um, because his, he and his wife didn't have any children. They also had donated over seven acres of right on Flagler, what is now Flagler Drive, for that later became um, Rosarian. Um, as another very interesting character was Sir Harry Oakes, who also was a gold miner, and he struck it rich in Canada. And he was a huge benefactor for schools all over the country. His, his mining, his mines made almost as much money as 
um, the Hearst mines, and he was, Mr. Hearst was also a, um, a parent at both the Palm Beach School for Boys and the um, Palm Beach Private School. And so Sir Harry Oaks, not only did he donate a lot, but he also had something of a controversial um, end to his career. He was murdered in the 30s. And so there are many theories. Uh, one of them is that his son-in-law killed him. And another was that he got, um, he crossed the uh, Meyer Lansky, who was in organized crime at that point and trying to get gambling in the Bahamas and um, Sir Harry Oaks was against that. There was also um, E.F. Hutton and his wife, Marjorie Merriweather Post. They donated quite a bit. And then after their divorce in the early 30s, um, her husband, her new husband, Mr. Davies, who was the ambassador to Russia, they gave um, quite a bit of money. And we all know that Marjorie Merriweather Post was descendant from um, C.W. Post, the serial king, and she had Mar-a-Lago built in Palm Beach. Um, there was also a um, very interesting woman who was an heiress also. Her father was a, a pharmacist and had created Bromo Seltzer, which is very, very similar to Alka-Seltzer today. And she had married Alfred Vanderbilt once again, their children went to the Palm Beach School for Boys and also Palm Beach Private School. And he actually um, died on the Lusitania. And then another one was Wiley Reynolds and his son was actually the first uh, alumnus to serve on the board after his dad did. So those are a few of the very interesting characters who were the incorporators. And our and here, whoops, we go back. Here we go. Here is one of the. Uh, we have a whole book of the. What are these called, Hillary? The corporation papers. They're stock certificates. Okay, and they were found and donated back to the school when we were researching the book. And you can see it says E. F. Hutton, who is. Um, was uh, Marjorie Merriweather Post's first husband. And, and um, each share was worth $100. And they issued about initially 1,500 shares to raise money to buy the land and in order to build the school also. So um, there it is. There's the school. So that's the original school. It was not very big. And they had land. The playground was to the west of the building, which is currently um, where the Ween Library is and the West Field. Um, so that, that was the original land that was purchased. Uh, for the school the doors it's very cool yeah. yes it was an art deco style um but the school at that time was they were continuing the same tradition that they had uh, most students went from anywhere from six weeks to three months it had been extended this that barbara's showing you now is a bill for books for the very famous playwright Edward Albee who wrote Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Uh, Barbara, I can't read it, but could you read some of the <laughs> Well, this is actually just his supplies. Um, we actually, again, found a book of um, all of the receipts for or bills for the whole year in, uh, I think it, it's somewhere in the third, 1936, I guess it is. But these are his school books. And they all cost under a dollar, except his one French book. I guess that was a dollar twenty-five. So the grand total was six dollars and thirteen cents. And then he had his, I guess, pencils for a dollar twenty-five. So the grand total for supplies for the entire year, I believe, was seven dollars and thirty-eight cents. 
Does it give his address on that? Not yes, it's that. on South Ocean Boulevard. His parents are Mr. and Mrs. Reed A. Albee. Yeah. Well, and one of his contemporaries who also went to the school and um, attended many of the functions out of class were, uh, was um, Fred Gwynn who played Herman Munster and that wonderful judge in My Cousin Vinny. Um, and they attended a, a, in a, they were in a room just that looked just like this. And this was one of the early classrooms in the, in the original building. And um, I think Barbara made a comment the other day on how they actually appeared to be social distancing. <laughs> how appropriate. <laughs> Another picture of the early school. And this was really cool because Hillary and I interviewed Peter Pulitzer and he actually gave us this picture of he, of he in the school in the 30s. Yes, and uh, their favorite teacher, Miss Elliot. She was, it, she was an actual, like, beloved teacher by everybody that we talked to from um, Ruth Flatus Maddock, all the way to her brother and everybody else that we talked to, she was beloved. Um, also, um, they had the same basic cu curriculum as they did um, in the 20s, um, emphasizing in not only raising the standards so that they, but also emphasizing individual achievement so that um, anybody who was deficient would get that attention that they needed. And that was, that was very, very important to them. Um, by the end of the 30s, um, the board decided to, it was time to reincorporate the school under the Palm Beach private schools. They began buying back the initial shares of the investors and they also created the logo that we have today and um, also they were able to buy back, back not only the shares but also the land and the building that had been leased with the first incorporation to the school and they created a parent association which was the new owner of the school and each parent was eligible to be part of that association after three years of attendance by their, by, um, their children. And they were um, approved by the board, but no parent has ever not been approved by the board. And so by the beginning of the 40s, the school was now owned by the parents, which was um, I think very important for the school. I have two more pictures and this is one. This is one of our prizes in the archives. It's a little hard to see, but it is an application from uh, John. Rose, Rose and Joseph Kennedy for yeah. their son, John. Jack Kennedy. And he actually didn't go to our school in, uh, I believe the date, he was born in 1917, and he was 16 years old when he was applying, because once again, so many of our, our students would come down for just a few months. Um, he did not actually attend. However, when you, when you tune into the 40s, you might hear about some other Kennedys that did attend our school. And one more picture, which I think is fascinating, was sent to us by an alumni, again, when we were doing um, the book. And we actually have the name of every child in this picture, which is very cool. It's, it's written on the back of it. And you can see it's in front of the doors of the school. And I believe this is 1939. Yeah, and no uniforms. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so... So at, at this point, the enrollment was about 104 students. So, and that's important to remember because in the 40s, there was a huge fluctuation, but they, it was 104 students and they went from October to May. That was the school year. 
Okay, so stay tuned. There'll be the 40s that we're going to record next. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Barb.